Yes, hello. My name is Doug Merrill, and I want to thank anybody who's attending our uh, <clears throat> Ask the Admin training today regarding uh, products and price books in Salesforce.com. Um, I have experience working on Salesforce as an admin and developer over the past five or six years now, and uh, and have found uh, using the products and price book features of Salesforce can provide a lot of benefit for your company if it fits your business model. Uh, and so we're going to talk a little bit about how to uh, build a price book, what a price book can do for you, um, how to build your products, how to tie them to a price book, and then I'll even go into opportunities and show you where you can use those products later um, in the price book so that you can, I'm sorry, in the opportunities, you can tie your products, your price books, and your opportunities all together and kind of create a collaborative understanding of, uh, of a potential sale and of past sales. So, okay, so uh, in Salesforce.com you have a couple of tables here. One's called the price books, one's called products. And your products is where you're going to put any uh, items or services that you use that are going to uh, represent, uh, you know, your potential revenue with your clients and the things that you're going to sell to them. So let's go look at products real quick here. If I click on the products tab, we're going to open up the interface where I can go and look and search through current products that exist, um, create new products, tie them to assets. Um, create a couple of different product views um, so that I can search through certain types of products based on uh, you know what 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 specifically I'm looking for. So right here we can see that I have a list of my recent products that I've created in my system. So Salesforce comes with a couple of standard products just to to have you play with and take a look at now when you first start up using Salesforce.com. But I've created a couple of test ones like this product right here. But let's suppose I want to create a product. Um, I can click on new. Enter in a test product. Uh, give it a, a code, and in this case, we'll just call it test one. And we're going to say this is a uh, an active product in our system. We'll click save and add price. Now, here's where the important thing is: is that every product you enter into the system must belong to a standard price book. And the standard price book is where we uh, where we hold all of the um, the baseline prices for all of our products and services. And this is pretty much your baseline, so I mean you discount from there, but this is your your baseline cost for uh, any standard product or service that you're going to have. So in this case, we'll just say there's a ten dollar uh, ten dollar product and we'll click uh, save. Now we need to add it to a price book. We can see we have a price. The standard price is ten dollars, but we want to add this to a particular price book. So let's click Add to Price Book, and in this case, we're just going to add it to the standard price book. We'll click Select, and the list price for this one is going to also be ten dollars. And we'll click Save, and we'll see also that this is active and in that price book. Now, to create a new price book, you come over here to Price Books, click on New. And we'll call this our test price book. We'll say it's active. And we want to clone any other standard price book or uh, custom price book that we have. So let's suppose I want to create another price book, but I don't want to start from scratch, adding all the products to it, etc. I can clone an existing one and just have it pull everything over. So if I click Premier Price Book, which is a custom one I've created, and click Save, it takes my Premier Price Book products and prices and puts them all in as uh, as if they were the exact same as the other price book. And then I can click on the Edit All button for this particular test price book. So if I click Edit All, they all come up. And then I can come in here and say, yeah, I want it to use the standard price um, on these ones right here. But for this one, it's actually going to be $4,000. And this one's going to be $70,000. But the rest of them will just use the standard price book and that should be fine. Except for this one, we're going to make $10,000. And then we'll click Save. And now we will have created a whole new price book with different pricing um, for all of those specific products. And uh, therefore, we've now got um, a whole new price book that we can choose from. Now you can also exclude certain records from uh, a price book if we don't want it 
available uh, in that price book at all. So if there's uh, this product is, you know, not we don't even want it to be available in this particular price book. We can click on delete, and remove that altogether, um, and just take a look at the uh, the entire list of products for this particular price book and what their prices are uh, versus the standard price. And there we have it. So now you'll want to notice one thing that we don't have. Um, uh, that uh, our test product that we created. So let's click on Add. We want to search for Test. Click Search. We should be able to find our test product, which is right here. We'll add that and we'll click Select. And now, like we did before, the standard price is $10. We want to create maybe a different price. For this particular price book, in this case, we're going to say it's eight dollars, and we'll click save. And now we've added that to the test price book at eight dollars. And there you go. Now, if you've got thousands of products, it can be kind of complex. It can take a long time to uh, to upload all those products, and you can uh, you can certainly spend a lot of time doing that. So, cloning uh, current products and price books uh, into a new price book, and then uh, going through and modifying the ones that you need, um, you know, you can certainly do that. Now, if there's a situation where you only want to modify a few, um, you can do certain, uh, let's go back to our price book actually here. Let's open up test price book. If we want to edit, um, uh, edit our price books, we can do that here. Um, but if we need to make any changes to uh, a price book by uh, uh, doing a search, we come over here to products open up our um, uh, uh, our price book and then we can select just a certain few and make changes uh, that we need to or add them to other price books as well so um, I suggest playing around with it it's usually a good idea to put a few test products in there see how they're going to act with each other um, make some changes look at some discounting and things like this and uh, and maybe run through a few scenarios if you haven't cur currently got it up and using uh, or running in your Salesforce, you're certainly going to want to do some tests and, and play around with it. Now, uh, playing around with them with respect to coding can be tricky. Products, price books, and price book entries um, are kind of complex tables that require a little bit of extra um, coding and special care when you're doing any coding or logic based on the products and price books, uh, especially using Apex code. So. Just be wary of that. There's some additional tables you need to take into consideration. Um, and so just be wary of that. OK, so how do these interact? These products and these price books, how do they interact when um, I'm dealing with an opportunity? Let's actually look at that. Let's go to an account. We'll create a, uh, let's just, uh, actually, let's, let's use uh, Edge Communications as a test account here. We'll click on Edge Communications. And then we're going to create an opportunity for this particular um, account. We're going to call this test opportunity. And we want to say the close date is going to be the 15th. And our stage is going to be needs analysis. We'll click Save. OK, so from here, I've got my opportunity set up. Now I can type an amount value in here and say this is a $10,000 um, opportunity. And that's fine. But suppose I want to actually tie this opportunity to a specific number based on what products or services a client um, is potentially going to purchase from us. So in that case, I'm going to come down to products. Let's do this. Let's actually hide this feed. We're going to come down to products and we're going to click on add product. Now if I want, I can choose an entire price book if I'd like. But in this case, I just want to add product. So let's click on add product. Choose a price book. We're going to go premier. I'm going to come in and I'm going to say I want this guy, this guy, and this guy as a product to include on our uh, opportunity. We'll click select. And then it says, okay, great. So based on the product, or the price book and the product, here's the price that we're selling this particular product at for this price book. And I can come in and say, one of these, I want two of these, and one of these, 
in this potential sale. Now, if I've got a discount, I can add a discount here if I'd like as well. You know, I can discount this by another $5,000 based on what I discussed with the client. If you have a specific date, you can include those in line description as well. Um, those are not required fields. And uh, they could mean, you know, a date field, perhaps a delivery date or something like that. Um, some people use them, some don't. But if we click Save, Um, I have a validation and rule that's if it's beyond a certain percentage, but I can't remember what it is, so we'll, we'll remove that, or we just won't use that discount rule. Let's click on Save. What it'll do is it shows me, first of all, you'll notice my $10,000 value is gone, right? Because I'm no, longer, I'm no longer using just an arbitrary sales value to determine this opportunity. I'm now going to be using my products and price books to determine what the overall value of that opportunity is going to be. So we'll see that I've got some opportunity or some products in here on this opportunity, what their quantities are. And if we add those up multiplied by the quantity and add up those values, it comes to a total of $295,000 and then expected revenues of 20% of that total amount right here. And now we can see that this potential sale is tied directly to what products and price books that I have available um, and that I've chosen to include in this particular sale. So based on your business and based on how you, uh, uh, you handle your, your sales team and how you handle your, your opportunities and projections uh, and forecasting, you may want to use products and price books to, uh, to tie down the amounts that you're putting out there. So they're a little less arbitrary because you know for sure what your client's purchasing uh, before you close the deal. And that can also get you uh, into a position a position where you can uh, run reports on what products your um, your pipeline contains um, and a whole bunch of other variables and that allows you to really pinpoint you know what what open business do we have that belongs in this particular product or from this particular price book or this pro uh, product category or family or anything like that so you can really take your uh, your forecasting and your and your potential sales um, uh, pipeline down to very specifics if you choose to using products and price books. And in this case, we'll uh, let's actually close this. Let's close this sale. Uh, we'll say this is a one. Closed one. Click OK. Save. And now we've closed one on opportunity with our products and our price books. One thing to remember, um, you must have a standard price book, or I'm sorry, every single um, uh, product must be tied to a standard price book with a standard price uh, before you can add it to any other uh, price book. And uh, one other thing to be careful about is when you're building uh, any kind of validation rules, formulas, any kind of uh, apex coding around price books, products, um, and opportunity products, um, you know, opportunity line items, things can get a little bit dicey just in the sense that uh, there's a lot of logic built around them and there's a number of tables involved. Uh, so just be wary of that when you're playing around with it. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed our webinar today. Um, we'd uh, pr appreciate to check out our website, chiasmllc.com. Uh, for any additional or future Ask the Admin trainings, please sign up for them and, uh, and participate. Hopefully, you know, hopefully we can all learn together, and I appreciate your time today. Thank you very much.